Welcome back to another update on my survival game. Last time I talked about how I revamped the procedural generation system, added infinite tile maps and most importantly made them efficient enough to run in real time. But lately I've been wondering, what if I can take it one step further? Well, let's see how we can do that. So I was browsing through internet or YouTube when I stumbled upon an interesting technique, mainly this video from Just Codes and it's called dual grid or at least that's how i know it dual grid like the name suggests use two separate grids one keeps the tracks of tiles positioning and the other is the display grid which has an offset and is used for displaying tiles it's a simple technique and since you know exactly which tiles are overlapping on the display grid you can get away with fewer tile set cases and still create something that looks way more dynamic but that's not really what got me interested what did catch my attention was the fact that you can generate tile visuals using just 4 tiles. Up until now, I've been using the typical 8 neighbor system where each tile checks the type of all 8 tiles around it and decides what to become based on that. It works well but with chunks having different height levels of tile maps and each having multiple tiles this could get a bit heavy. But with this new approach, I'm using half the number of tiles for each calculation which means potentially a big performance gain. So first off I made some reference tiles, just basic squares, no details, no vibes, just peak programmer art. Drop them into the project, started coding and yeah I'm not gonna bore you with the deep type unless you really wanna watch me cry over bit mass at 2am. The gist, I'm using 4 tiles instead of 8 and shifting the visuals by half a tile. Big brain stuff. So anyway I finished the code, no errors, no red squiggles which honestly does raise some concerns. But, um, yeah, I should be fine. Actually, there is problem. Two, to be precise. One is definitely the corners. I think I know what's going on here. Right now, each chunk is responsible for generating its own visuals. When an adjacent tile map gets generated, it sends out an event and the chunk updates its corner visuals based on what it reads from the neighbors. That works fine with the old system but with dual create with shifting 4 tiles and all that, each chunk doesn't just need to read its neighbors, it actually needs to share its own visual data with them too. So the solution? I ended up building a new workflow system. Basically there are two manager components. One handles all the tiles data and one is the visual manager which, you guessed it correctly, creates the tile map visuals. Once everything's set up, it sends the required visual data to chunk components which they can apply to themselves. Also, I don't need to apply the shifted color array to texture, I can just move the visual plane by half a unit. Since visuals and data are separate entities, it's not gonna be a problem. Now that I think about it, it kind of mirrors the whole dual grid idea. Two separate grids or systems, one for data, one for visuals. I didn't plan it that way, but I guess the structure just made sense. Problem number two, cliffs. Yeah, I don't know what's happening here. I guess the way it's set up, a cliff tile checks the tile directly above it. And if the tile is ground, it assigns itself as a cliff and picks the right visual. Pretty straightforward. But with the visual offset from dual grid, that's no longer enough. Now it also needs to know what's happening in the adjacent tiles. So yeah, it needs to actually use its neighbors, like a decent tile should. And honestly, at this point, it just makes sense to apply the same technique across everything. No reasons, clear should be freelancing their visuals. So after fixing those issues, the visuals are finally showing up correctly. Just ignore the size of the tiles for now, that's not a bug, that's just my masterpiece of placeholder art. It will all look fine once the final tile sets are all in. Probably. But before I get into that, I figured why not update the project to the latest Unity version, yep, Unity 6, because nothing says stable and safe like upgrading to the engine that nearly started a civil war. So I started drawing out the tiles for the different bitmask cases. This time I went for a more rounded look, something that feels a bit more organic and less grid locked. Drop the new tiles into Unity, hit play, and let's see how that turned out. Um, yeah, not quite right. There's confusion on the sides which definitely needs a bit more tweaking, but hey, progress, right? So I went back and redrew the tiles again. 
This time I added proper cliff sides along the borders. Kept everything more uniform, finished it, imported it. Alright, let's try this again. Third time's the charm, right? Is it gonna work or... Huh, yeah, it worked. The tiles look clean, sides are clear, I'm able to perceive depth. Will I change it again later? Let's not answer that. But for now, I'll take the win. And yeah, that's it for this video. Next time, I'm thinking of adding the collision and traversal system for this multi-level top-down world and probably more reasons to question my life choices. Might also take a look at fine-tuning the generation code a bit more because of course I will. But for now, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed watching me slowly lose my mind over tile maps, consider dropping a like or subscribing or both if you are feeling generous. And I'll see you in the next one.